Today we're doing a quick update on our 1978 Pontiac Trans Am project. The last time we showed you this car, it just came back from the Media Blaster and uh, we were looking at the body and we took a quick look at the Heights independent rear suspension. Uh, remember, this is gonna be a very high-end pro touring build uh, designed to drive and handle really, really well, have great power, but also be very comfortable and be serviceable anywhere in the country, right? So it's gotta be very reliable, which means it needs to have good parts that are well thought out and a good execution. Now this car's got a 480 horsepower LS3 V8 under the hood. We smoothed the firewall and added a vintage air AC system. And then we also mounted our power box for the uh, ECM right there on the firewall. Our cooling system's in place, our air intake tube is coming together. We've installed our Hydratech hydraulic brake booster unit and the Willwood brakes. Uh, we've bent up most of the brake lines and uh, you can see the hydraulic lines that go to the power steering pump for the uh, Hydrotech booster. And we've got our 19 inch year one snowflake wheels. Uh, the owner wanted the look of that snowflake wheel but we had to clear big brakes and also put a big tire on it. So these uh, are a perfect option for that. The challenge becomes running the exhaust and we started at the engine using a set of hooker cast iron exhaust manifolds for the LS engine. I like these a lot, they package really well. They uh, might not perform as well as an equal length tuned header, but they flow very, very well. And again, the mission of this car is not to wring out every possible horsepower, but to make something that's very drivable and uh, is quiet enough to where it's not driving them crazy going down the road. So these hooker manifolds are a great place to start. And an interesting thing about an independent rear suspension car like this is that the rear axle doesn't move up and down. The wheels and the rear suspension articulate, but the center is mounted solid to the car. So you no longer have a center section going up and down, which is good because that allows us to run our exhaust pipe right underneath that center section, which I don't like to do on a leaf spring or a coil spring car. But in this case, it can be kind of tucked up there. So that became our target point uh, the other thing interesting about this is that that means the drive shaft doesn't move in the car. It turns, but it doesn't go up and down when the car goes over bumps either. So that gives us kind of an interesting uh, relationship to run those pipes from the headers back to the back of the car. So knowing that, um, and also knowing we're trying to take as much sound as possible without really killing the performance, we came off the headers and ran straight into a pair of catalytic converters. And we did this, uh, you had to you know, clean the air a little bit, but also to knock down some of the choppiness of the sound of that 480 horse LS3. Uh, took a little bit of a dance to get in and out of those and package tightly around the uh, cross member and the bottom of the Trans Am, but it came out pretty cool. And then leaving the catalytic converters going back, uh, we elected to put our mufflers underneath the rear seat uh, because the original muffler on this car was a transverse unit that went left to right over the rear axle. Well, there's no more space for that with the independent Heights rear suspension. So we ended up modifying a set of mufflers. We cut some stainless mufflers open and reworked the internals and made the inlet and exhaust on the same side so that it's a little bit more of a turbo style muffler in there now. Um, swirls around through some packing and then exits out the back. Now that may affect performance a little bit, our customer had one of these back in the day that only made like 200 horsepower. So, you know, anything more than that, he's going to be very happy. So I'm not worried about really, you know, diminishing the power of this thing too much. So the next step was to come out of those mufflers and run the two pipes under the rear axle of the car. And by doing that, we looked at it and said, we might be able to actually make another muffler that lives underneath that center section. So we made a housing and ran some perforated pipe through it and filled it with some packing material. And next thing you know, we now have another straight through style muffler underneath that rear axle. So the last part was to snake the uh, mandrel bent tubing and have it exit the back of the car. Uh, we wanted to exhaust the car all the way at the back and not dump it in front of the rear wheels. It's a much cleaner way to go and it keeps the fumes out of the car and it keeps the look of the Trans Am with those signature 
split exhaust tips. So we're really excited to hear how this one sounds. Uh, it's been a really cool project. We love doing that kind of engineering to figure out how to make things work uh, and cutting and modifying and building things that, that never existed. Uh, because no kit designed for a 78 Trans Am is gonna fit this car with the Detroit Speed subframe, the uh, LS engine, and that Heights independent rear suspension. If you've got a project like this you need some help with, uh, you've got a Pro Touring Dream car or maybe a custom or a cool hot rod, you can reach us at v8speedshop.com contact and we're happy to uh, maybe make your dream car come to life. Mm -hmm.